<clears throat> Hello everyone, this is Tormuse, and today I'm picking up where I left off in my Disco Elysium game. Uh, map tab, your journal lists all the white checks you can attempt. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, we last left off. Um, there were some plot developments, the plot thickened and stuff. Um, Classy denied that... Not only did she deny that she'd been uh, sexually assaulted by the deceased, but uh, that that they were they were in a like romantic relationship. She actually had a thing for him, and, uh, and the dock workers put her up to um, claiming she'd been sexually assaulted. <clears throat> and also, we found out that she was the one that placed the nine one one call. Well, call or you know. Emergency services call, I guess I should say. It might not be 911 since this doesn't take place in the U.S. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, um, yeah, and the dock workers claim that she's lying, and they say they have evidence in the form of this tape here. The door gunner Megamix, as he called it. So it's apparently a recording of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications. Um... Well, we need to find somewhere to play it. Um, first things first, I'm going to try the tape player in my room, although uh, I have a strong suspicion that's broken. I mean, we, we know it's broken, but its I have a strong suspicion that it's non-functional. Yeah, it's, it's highlightable now there. Close the door before Kim comes in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, let's get the to work. The tape player is still and silent. Seems it has completely broken down now. It's still visibly turning. <laughs> Darn it. This would have been very helpful with the Mega Mix, but it isn't anymore. <clears throat> it's not my fault. Uh, yeah. Any ideas? My Kinema only comes with radio. <laughs> let's try to find a new tape player. Fine. Perhaps we should talk to Roy at the pawn shop. He has stuff. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it's, it's either Roy at the pawn shop or Ceiling. Uh, both of them have. Uh, both of them have t t uh, tape players for sale, as I recall. <clears throat> So what could be on this tape? I mean, like if it's if it's uh, a recording of the radio broadcast from the security team, um, presumably it's not going to be like recordings of the sexual assault slash rape in uh, in itself. Um, wasn't there here? Yeah, there's a little player there, right? The speakers below are banged up and worthless. Hmm. The sneakers triumph over them. They're the star of the show here. Okay. <laughs> Inspect the sneakers. Inspect the speakers. Um, yeah, since they're banged up and worthless. Okay, so maybe um, well, I'll inspect them anyway, I guess. These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable found ultras atop them. A small heat emboss on the veneer reads, Solidarity aid from the People's Republic of Samara. The speakers themselves don't seem to display any magical qualities. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. The sneakers are the stars here. <laughs> Poor little speakers, Pat. <laughs> no, don't pity them, officer. These are old Samaran garbage. Don't even look at them. Check out these super cool fun ultras instead. F Fifty real for the sneakers. They boost reaction speed and hand-eye coordination, but they reduce sensitivity. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, okay. Let's see what Roy's got. Double click. Pathfinding. Pathfinding. Okay, he figured it out. Oh, hey, and Kim circled the other way. Interestingly enough. 
Okay, there we go. Stereo system up here. How much is the it? boombox is weight on the shelves, oh. and your boombox, that gold and amber Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its deep real eyes. Are you sure this is all in working order? Can I just can I just play a tape on one of the boomboxes really qu real quick? Oh, interesting. We can uh, you can choose to just not buy it and see if you. Oh. I mean that means. I mean, I, I, I mean, if he lets us just play it right here, right now, um, that means we're kind of broadcasting evidence for, for you know, civilian ears to hear. Um, let's get a discount this boombox, a police discount here. Yeah, um, yeah let's ask him if he's, all, if he's sure it's all in working order. Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech, found sounds and music from a variety of genres, even though I don't really like music. Yeah, uh, yeah it's 12 real. It's not a bad price at all. Um, I, I'm just going to buy it, I think. I mean, that means I won't have enough money for the, the, the next day. But, uh, I mean, sorry. I have, I have one for... Uh, like tomorrow, but not the day after that. <laughs> anyway, give it a whirl. 12 for you. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Thanks, Ray. Tools. This is the real to real boombox of everyone's youth. A little banged up, a little chipped, and honestly, not that loud either. It looks cool though. It sells up being carried on the carried on the shoulder, allowing you to play audio tape items and blast music into the face of unsuspecting strangers. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> That's neat. I d <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, you know, I'm familiar with with boom boxes, you know, the, the, those big rectangular things that is, you know, plays uh, like tapes. Like, I, I think of tapes. I think of like the little like audio cassette tapes, you know, like not these not these huge real things, uh, like like this guy here. <laughs> Did they really make boom boxes like this that have like these full real things going on? Huh. Interesting. Anyway. Okay, so let's just uh, just wander off somewhere and um, play this thing, I guess. I mean, he said I can play it anywhere, but on principle, I, I sort of feel like I want to go somewhere private to play it. Let's just uh, let's just wander back to the hotel or hostel. Back back to the hostel. Let's go back to the room. Look at the space room. This is Kim's room. He has—he must have a tiny room. <laughs> All right. Let's check this thing out here. Um, <laughs> two rooms over from Classy just occurred to me. Hopefully, the hopefully the sound doesn't carry. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I flashed. I forgot I had that. Um, all right. Interact. I guess. The quarter reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. All right, let's play it. Let's check this thing out. We push, command set, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. Okay. Whoa. This is a Remishar. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. Oh, that screech some kind of machinery. The Harbor. That's the son of a balsam crane. The tent takes out his notebook. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. 
dogs and chickens too. Hmm. Okay, but who is this speaking? Like we've we've never we've never heard the colonel's voice. So I mean, we haven't heard any of their voices aside from uh, uh, you know the the, the quote unquote scab leader. So this, you know, this could be anybody. <clears throat> Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. It's pretty unintelligible. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Uh huh. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. A click, then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. Okay, then. <sighs> okay. Well, is, is that is this is this is the dock worker's evidence that the colonel uh, raped Classia? I I mean. <sighs> Okay, first of all, we, we, we don't know whose voice this is. I mean, we, we, can, we can go talk to Joyce and, and uh, confirm whose voice it is, I suppose. Um, uh, secondly, like, we don't have a, a, like a time frame on this. Like, I, I kind of want it just from the fact that the, the way he's saying, like, I'll effing do them all in, I, I was kind of wondering. Um, um, like 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 the the uh, uh, the other two mercenaries were talking about you know getting revenge for the death of the colonel uh, by doing everyone in. Although I mean, I guess by if this isn't the the you know the the the, the fake scab leader's uh, 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 voice and and the other uh, the other mercenary was said to be a woman, so I guess by process of el elimination, this is probably. Uh, uh, this is probably the colonel. Um, yeah, I don't know. It... That disco cunt on the counter. I, it, I mean, they were they were in a relationship for weeks. You know, like I, it doesn't seem like. You would um, re ref if they, if if he's talking about classy there, it doesn't seem like he would he would talk about uh, refer to her as, as that disco count, you know, uh, rather than it, it, um, I don't know. It, it's it's um, I'm gonna tear up. That Falcon style kills some dogs, chickens too. Gonna rent a room, a real nice one. Next part is unintelligible. I don't give it an F done and done mentally. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. What's all that? What's hmm. like talking about gonna rent a room? Like I sort of wonder, like um. Uh, if this recording comes from when they first arrive, or or, or or maybe this is this maybe this is stuff spliced together. Like they they have. Um, I mean, you did call it a mega mix. Like, uh, like I have a sneaking suspicion this might might be like disjointed, pieced together bits of uh, recordings. Like this doesn't it doesn't this doesn't feel like. Uh, like a, a full conversation, you know. I don't know. This, this... No, no, it, it, overall, there just this doesn't feel like there's anything conclusive about this. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what to make of it. We're gonna continue. The lieutenant presses the button marked "Arrête" on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. What was that at the very end? Silence? Or what, what do you think? Who's this Cordy? What's Kohoi? Okay, then what now? Remove the tape. Um, what? 
Joyce did mention them by name, uh, or, or the names that she got. She said she didn't get their real names. Uh, which one was Cordy? I'm assuming I'm going to get to ask all these. I just, I just I might as well ask them all in order, I guess. What was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. Yeah. What do you think? It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. Yeah. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Uh, I agree. He also sounded inebriated, but he did say he's going to do it. You can't edit words in someone's mouth. I think he sounded all right just letting off some steam. Uh, I'm going to go with I agree. He also sounded inebriated, I guess. Still. Uh, the lieutenant looks at the tape. You're familiar with this look now. It's his look of suspicion. It, it, is, it is a little suspect. <laughs> hmm. There's more going on here than we know. Yeah. Yeah, Esprit de Corps is... It's like there's... Hmm. Who's this Cordy? Cordy could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. Probably the mountain at the harbour gate. Yeah. Mr. Right to work. Exactly, yeah. And what's Kohoi? I don't know if we want to know. <laughs> a village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safri. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. Oh boy. <clears throat> uh, you think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. Yeah, okay. Okay then, what now? I think we've got a few more questions for Classy, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. Hmm. Okay. All right. I talked to Classy with the door gunner, Mega Mix. All right. I I was thinking, you know, all things considered, that we want to, uh, you know, confirm that that's the colonel's voice before talking to Classy. Uh, I want to talk to Joyce first. It seems it seems like the logical, the more the logical thing to do before we talk to Classy, you know, before we confront Classy with this uh, this information. It, it, it you want to. Uh, I mean, I don't know if the game is going to give me the option to do it, but it seems like the logical thing to do to me. Confirm that it's his voice and uh, see if Joyce has anything to say. Can I look at the wall again? <laughs> Just an ordinary wall. Nothing oh. to see here. Oh, darn. Okay. Still locked. <laughs> if I level up my conceptualization, I can try to re-roll it, I guess. I don't know if there's... I doubt there's any point. Yo, Joyce. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? These tattoos again. He's been doing with Everarch. Sorry, but let's talk some more about this boat that you're on. Uh, talk about wild pines. What do you do? Talk about the strike the harbor. Let's talk about the lynching. Um. Okay. Let's talk about the lynching. Is probably going to lead into it, if if at all. Of course. Anything to help. Uh, blah, blah, blah. the connection between lynching and the strike. Okay, talking about Cornell. You said the deceased. You said the deceased assaulted a woman. Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. Who did the passing on then? The remaining contractors. Their tribunal. It's what they believe. The remaining contractors. <laughs> So, so the other two mercenaries. That's they kept to talk about a tribunal before. Okay. Um, that the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. This does not come as news to us, but still, to your knowledge, where did this assault take place? If you know. Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk. 
Maybe on narcotics, too. <clears throat> Last Sunday night at the Whirling Rags. Um, and it's Tuesday. I mean, it's one of those... Ah, one of those annoying English things. When you say uh, last Sunday night, they, some, some, you mean two days ago or a week ago, two days ago, as in like nine days ago? <laughs> I mean, the guy's been dead for a week, so presumably she means two Sundays ago. That, that timeline doesn't line up, though. I mean... Like, um, Titus said that the assault happened a week before the killing did. Uh. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. There's someone, uh, oh, here you go. I know the woman you're talking about. We, we have it under control. I mean, okay. Good. Then you've made progress. It's imperative that you move fast. The tribunal will not be patient. That's it? That's all we got? Are you, do we, we can't play the tape for her? I, I, I want to confirm that this is the colonel's voice on the tape. Like, we don't know what his voice sounds like. Like this, if we're if we're using this as evidence to uh, you know a crime, then <sighs> okay. Um... Okay, let's just. If you mean, did I see him alive? Lely, his service name, yeah, nom de guerre, most guess. likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. <sighs> so the anything else I should have to say he was? was 40. Okay. Indeed, this match is the He was uh, occidental, I think. In a way, yes. it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it, through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. Okay. Well, uh, darn. I, I was, I was hope. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to give me the option here. All the information we get here is that. I mean, he had a facial injury, which gives him a unique ab accent, is, is what she's saying. Um, uh, I'm just looking at, I'm looking at these options and wondering, are, do any of these sound like a lead-in to uh, playing the tape for Action between the lynching and the strike? I have an indirect role to play. I'm sad to say. My yeah. employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith. Every worker. A member of the board. Do you, do you need a secure detail? Maybe not. Who are they exactly? Cronel. Yeah. An Orani. They wear this ceramic is, armor. This is the so what? The story is one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant union members to subdue him. Yes, this is the same dialogue we got before. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders for now. It's a smokescreen. What is the nature of it? Whether to execute. It will be all of them. The decision is already made. Uh, you made a mess here. I have to say, this is not disco. <laughs> the investigations can team up, you know, share research intelligence, or boy, oh boy, is that not good. I'm tempted to say it's just for... <sighs> Executions will follow. I mean, this is the same. Mm. 
have to say is it's not disco. It is very far from disco. My only hope is that you provide a single concrete suspect before the mercenaries indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put, she grabs hold of the mainsail. If you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. The debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor hmm. is virtually so impenetrable the same to muzzle dialogue. loaded weapons. As the I same dialogue as before. A bloodbath. Uh, I can't see it happen too many things that have to go wrong first as in this pretty bleak scenario so I mean I think confrontation is inevitable I, I don't really want to say those other things I'm just gonna go with the same dialogue options before leaks. all we can do is keep the rest from going the same way one single concrete okay I'm sorry to have been the bearer of bad news if there is anything else I can okay I mean, can I, I can just real is just what you needed. The you just play it from here. Come on, set. And the tape stop. This is a Remishar. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. The harbor. When this shit is done, I'm going to tear that place up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens, too. Going to run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance a whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your portal reel. The tape stops spinning. I think we've got a few more questions for Classy, don't you? Okay. Um. Did, which one was Cor? Good. What can I help you with? Um. She, she gave the name. There's Lely was the colonel. Who was Cordy the um? Just of course, anything to help. Tell me about the canal. They boast a long list of clients. Meaning they're used to a. Yes. All the good conflict. Co Sadly, no. Before this happens, I have. If you still have access Sorry, to the ICP. Do you know a lot about the inner world? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was. I have. And they will. However, these orders <clears throat> take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Um, Until they do, it's all on us. Are there remain two mercs They've now? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking... They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. That's wise. Our goal is to shoot. avert catastrophe. Besides, so hoping she would mention names. <laughs> you're likely to encounter them sooner or later. Okay, whatever. I'm sorry to have. You know what? Okay, let's just let's go talk to Classy. I don't I don't think I'm gonna get any other information here. I'm just wasting time. <laughs> Should probably still be keeping an eye out for uh, like bottles in the ground and stuff so I can get more uh, tear payments. <laughs> I haven't seen any bottles for a while. Oh well. Alright, classy. 
Let's, uh... See what else you got to say. Officer, it's a fine day for questions. <laughs> she knows you in greeting. <laughs> um, hmm. So I need to talk to you about your room again. Let's talk about this so called assault. Ty's Hardy gave us or a recording where the deceased states his intention to commit rape. Um, well, I guess that's we're going with here. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. Hmm. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. Uh, on this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording, exactly? <laughs> it's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's going to do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? She arches her eyebrows. Um, those are the exact words he used, something to that effect, yes or no. Um... Something to that effect. I mean, he said cowboy style, but you know. He did use the phrase soldier of apocalypse at one point, but eh. The phrase was used. The lieutenant checks his notes and nods. <laughs> yeah. That was practically his pickup line. And she picks the cup back up. <clears throat> A memory surfaces in her tired neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. Thanks, electrochemistry. <laughs> Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it kohoi style? Uh, yes, the word whores used, kohoi was mentioned. Was, was that his pickup line? <laughs> did, did, he, did he go up to her and say, let's do it kohoi style? <laughs> Great. <clears throat> he wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little kohoi. It wasn't his everything. He lived his own little kohoi. Hmm. Uh, why say things like that, machismo? Or do you think he was trying to scare people? Okay, which is the better option to say here? Um... Hmm. I mean, these these are kind of both a, a similar meaning, really. Um. So let's go with why to say things like that, machismo. Yes, w was he bragging? Hmm. Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. To keep on living. Until they just sort of turn into his, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Coping mechanism, catchphrase, persona. Um... Yeah, she's, she said he lived his own kohoi, was his, ev his everything. Um, integrate them into his idea of normalcy in order to keep living. Um, like, coping mechanism is one way to interpret it. Like, like he's. Uh, if, if he, on some level, experiences some guilt about doing those things, uh, is that might be how he copes with it. But his, um, 
like coping mechanism and in, in, uh, implies that he is a response to some kind of to some kind of trauma no doubt he had, he experienced some uh, a, a trauma in his wartime situations that he found himself in um, like catchphrase could fit as well persona I mean let's go with persona running joke I was gonna say running joke <laughs> and it sounds like he didn't even get the good bits Lely's punchlines got way way funkier than that hmm he was like the Semenese conflict the Kohoi massacre and the 36 famine in Yezu all rolled into one person then cast in Orani ceramic armor which he wore in bed and in the shower which he wore in bed and in the shower I, I wondered about that you know like the the fact that they supposedly caught him in full armor. Like I, I kind of wondered if if maybe they uh, like they put those boots on him after he was dead. Um, but she's saying basically he kept the armor on constantly. Okay. <laughs> in bed, like presumably, like. <laughs> Like when they were um, doing it too. Weren't you afraid you like this kind of stuff, or and you spent time with this person romantically? Um, let's go with weren't you afraid? Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded. Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Um. Okay. <laughs> Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up, Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Huh. She wouldn't. She doesn't have the full hoy in her. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things in Martinez? I mean. Hey, Coder, how's it going? Uh, I'm. I mean, I. I, I just... <laughs> I just asked that question by reflex, and I realized, oh wait, you asked the same question. Uh, yeah, welcome to the stream, though. <laughs> um, yeah, continuing uh, the murder investigation, we uh, the plot thickens. The uh, the 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 murdered guy supposedly sexually assaulted a woman, and that the the dock workers killed him in, in retaliation. But now the supposed um, uh, assault victim is saying, "Nah, he didn't do it. Actually, we, we, it was a consensual thing. We were romantic lovers." And uh, and she she said that she's the one that called the police. Actually, because up till now it was a mystery who who had called them. Uh, she said she didn't want to tell anyone because uh, yeah. Anyway, so but uh, I don't know. There, there's the. <sighs> The, uh, the dock workers caught him on tape saying that he was going to rape her, so it was like, um, which isn't doesn't seem conclusive in itself. Like, it's a bit of back and forth. We're not sure. We're not sure exactly the details of what's going on here. Right now, we're uh, we're questioning her about the tape. <laughs> anyway, you tell you he had actually done any of those things here in Martinez. I mean, no. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they were apparently together for a few weeks. Uh, they did a lot of uh, drinking and doing drugs and um, having sex together <laughs> during that time. Um, according to her, anyway. But the dog worker is saying, nope, nope, he raped her, and that's why we killed him. So it's, it's, a, little, it's a little sus. <laughs> um, they're talking about, like, they're trying to protect her, and she's like, like, no, nah, he, he wasn't hurting me. <laughs> anyway. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. Hmm. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Um, 
doing pretty well myself. Just wrapped up another FNF mod on Discord. That was two, that was two NSFW for Twitch. Fair enough. I <laughs> uh, hope it was fun. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah um yeah she said she didn't want to talk about details about the the deceased because uh, she's just having trouble de dealing with it emotionally i mean she seems pretty calm but she said it was difficult seeing the guy hanging in the yard for a week <clears throat> um But, um, yeah, let's see if she's ready to talk about the victim a bit, maybe. Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. Hmm. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. Hmm. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Hmm. Lelystad. That's a good start. Okay. Lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. Okay, so we, you know where he's from, anyway. <clears throat> we have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. Tears a page and hands it to you. Okay. <clears throat> the young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy mm. observations recorded neatly in blue ink. Hmm. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. Okay, so where's Lelystad? The place, I mean. How how old was he? His eye color. He had a tattoo. What did it mean? I think we're finished. Okay. Um, like, where's Lelystad? This is, uh, that seems like information that Kitten can give us. Like, we don't, it doesn't make, it doesn't make a lot of sense to ask her about that. Um, I mean, the most pressing thing is probably the information about the tattoo. I wouldn't expect her to know that. We I mean, we already found that out anyway. <clears throat> that is a map of locations he'd been. But uh, okay, let's go with how old was he? He was forty-two. The meaning of life, universe, and everything. Coincidentally, it's how old I am too. No coincidence. <clears throat> forty-two? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. Hmm. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. Memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Hmm. We were slightly off then. Thank you for clearing it up. Lieutenant makes a correction in his notes. Uh, his eye color. Blue. L light blue. They were like... <laughs> Like little blue galaxies, you know. It was strange seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. She stops her eyes half closed and continues. <clears throat> Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth. Yeah, there was, uh, Joyce indicated he had a facial injury. <clears throat> yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. Attempts on the members. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made it oily, not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Okay, he had a tattoo. What did it mean? Oh, that. Uh, there's an Ernie's map of the waterways and a map of his sewer's history. What did it represent? Do you know? Um, maybe we can. We can ask it an open-ended question, or we can say we we. I mean, we already know what it what it is. Let's. I mean, let's go. Let's make it an open-ended question. See what she says. It was a map of his life and the places he visited as a soldier. Yeah. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. I mean, yeah. 
Showing off to chicks, how so? Or, um, or showing off to chicks, how so? How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattoos. The sheets are dirty for some reason. <clears throat> He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? <laughs> she points at the air with her sharp nailed finger, picking out an imaginary tattoo star. <laughs> and he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bat shit there. Killed some loincloths. <laughs> She lowers her voice comically. <clears throat> and so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. And you were the woman in this? Oh, yeah. Can you tell us precisely what these mean? H hand her the photo. Uh-oh. No, thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. Yeah, but yeah. it seems, uh, yeah, well, just, just, just put this picture of your dead boyfriend in your face here. Uh, she doesn't take it. Uh, she pours herself some more coffee. Go on. He was a blue eyed boy with thick arms from a small town. He was also poor and the government of Aranya needed some people killed. So they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminoline Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. Yeah, not a very fun story. Good story, thanks. Thanks for clearing us up. Um, let's go with not a very fun story. <laughs> it is when you're high. Yeah. It can be very exciting then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. Yeah. A change of topic? Uh, where's Lelestad? The place, I mean. In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. Hmm. You are almost right, officer. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. Lieutenant shakes his head like you he, like missed a shot in the darts that day. Yeah. Uh, look at Klasse, you were both from Oranje. Or look at Autopsy. Um, you were both from Oranje? Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranje and Rek. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranje. It was bad habit. Yeah. Sex. Alcohol. <laughs> Thanks, electrochemistry. <laughs> uh, I think we're finished with this line of questioning. Hand the lieutenant back his notes. <laughs> All right. Ten puts a slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. Got some, got some experience here. How close are we to leveling up? Yeah, 25 more points. Still got a couple of spare uh, points to level things up with. Um, wait, waiting for... Uh, oh yeah, I can also... Um, I can put one of those levels into this 15th Indo Tribe thing here, whatever this is. Takes six hours to research it. What the hell? Um, yeah, why not? I've got, I've got two levels to spare, and I'm gonna level up again soon. So let's research. Let's get this thing researching. <clears throat> and what's this little update? Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> um, Okay. Cooley.
gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Um, okay. Um, what else? Let's worry about you for the record. I need to talk to you about your room again. Let's talk about talk more about this so-called assault. I mean, these are the lighter color, which indicates that they uh, haven't been chosen before. Is there going to be more information, more options here? I guess I'll, I'll pick it just to see if there's... Not my favorite topic, but okay. Uh, I guess I spend, um, yeah, so I've already chosen all the options except for the are you sure you weren't raped uh, line. Um, that, I don't know. Um, I don't feel comfortable asking that one, to be honest. <clears throat> um, I mean, again, it's the, the way this game operates, like, who knows? I might get experience for selecting that option, but... Uh, How about we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? Okay, talk about your room again. Yeah. Uh, quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. Where does that door lead to? Point to the... Oh, okay. We can actually ask her about it. Where does that door lead to? Point to the door on the roof. I have no idea, officer. She looks at it calmly. Okay. Yeah, this weird locked door, which we couldn't figure out what, it, what that was about. Um, uh, yeah, we've quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. I mean, we, we, we knew that she was doing drugs, but eh, okay. Thank you. I've put a lot of time and effort into it. She says without any discernible irony. <laughs> yeah. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Revachon, but you should still reprimand her. Hmm. Narcomania is nothing to be proud of. Uh, it was quite impressive. How did you amass such a horde? Or no further questions. Um, I mean, authority suggesting that I should reprimand her. Um, she doesn't seem like the type of person who's, who's going to be bothered if I if I uh, 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 say this. Like, it's not like we're going to arrest her or anything. Um, like I don't know. It, it like I, I don't think she's going to be bothered if I if I if I reprimand her for all the drugs. But at the same time, there's no reason to to piss her off. Um, Let's, let's go with it. it. was quite impressive. How did you ask such a horror? With money, sir. It's not exactly the NT star size caboodle I intend for it to be one day, but it's getting there. Collection includes Nacra and opioid antagonists. You seem to have, among other things, Preptide. Yeah. Um, it, it is probably prudent to mention the, uh, the, the anti overdose uh, drug that she's got there, yeah. Uh, an opioid antagonist. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Yeah. Is that something that happens to you often, Miss? His tone isn't aggressive, just inquisitive. Yeah. I mean, this is the one. This is the thing that I was wondering if if uh, the colonel had an overdose. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> Better safe than sorry. She takes a drag and smiles. <clears throat> Seem to have, among other things, preptide. So that's that's the uh, the speed. Um, I guess you can ask her about it. Oh, yes. One of my favorites. It cures many ailments. Like what? Like not being able to stay up for 36 <clears throat> hours. Not being happy. It cures those ailments. It's just a merit speed molecule, basically. All right, then. <clears throat> uh, that's all as far as that goes, then. Very funky. She takes a drag looking you straight in the eye. <clears throat> Uh, okay. Does that door lead to uh, that window is new? Yeah, she didn't have anything to say about the, the the recently replaced window. I'm still curious about that. Um, when I picked the what are you doing here in the whirling rags before, there were two other options like like here in the whirling rags or here in Martinez or here in Revenshaw. Um. I'm wintering. How long have you been? About four months. I came in November. 
Or here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol? Let's go with here in the Whirling. Because it's the funkiest building in Martinez. <laughs> and because all the other buildings are bombed to hell. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's signs of war torn stuff all around. Um, and let's ask her why I she's in Ravishol. About four months. Here in the Whirling. I always wanted to see the only city in the world in the worst time of the year. It's a tourist thing. Hmm, interesting. I, I'm, I'm reminded of, um, there, there's a, a YouTube channel called Natasha's Adventures, which is um, uh, uh, is a young woman who, who lives in Russia. And um, her thing is exploring all old ruins and abandoned buildings and stuff like that and it's it's like it's it's an aesthetic that appeals to her which is really interesting <clears throat> um yeah some people are into that sort of thing <clears throat> um she, she wanted to specifically wanted to go to the most ruined place she could find basically <laughs> okay other questions for you? All right. Uh, okay, let's turn to this later. And I have a thought. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? That's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Where is this going? How old are you? That's where this is going. Hmm. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? Hmm. Yeah, how old is Harry Dubois? You could ask either one of them. <laughs> Kim, how old do you think I am? Or turn around, Miss, how old do you think I am? I got this, I got this, my age. I think I'm dot dot dot. Um... Do you really, you really want to be asked? Okay. Um, so it's a weird question to turn and ask her as we're leaving. I, I, I sort of feel like I'd rather ask him, I think. Huh? Lieutenant isn't quite sure he heard you. Uh, how old do I look or nothing? Um, how old do I look? How old? 58. Oh my god, that's really old, really. Or what if you're wrong? We were both wrong about the disease. He turned out to be 40. Or you're probably right, it's about what I look. Um, does he look 58? Hmm. Yeah. Eh. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is probably this is like uncomfortably putting Kim on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> that's really old, really. Or you're probably right. That's about what I like. Or. What if, let's go with what if you're wrong. We were both wrong with the disease. He turned out to be 40. 42. And he was deceased. He had been decomposing for a week. Yeah, that's that's something, yeah. I feel, I feel like I've been decomposing for longer than that. But the ravages of Algul are nearly as extreme as that of death itself. The tank is already... Or, you're right, I'm probably 62. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> um... I don't know. This, I don't. I, did I really want to? Could, I, could, I could have just said never mind, uh, but I, we were committing ourselves to this light of conversation here. I guess uh, I feel like I've been decoding for long. That ravages of al al alcohol are nearly as extreme as that of death cells. Um, this feels like it's going along the lines of what Measurehead was saying earlier. Let's go with I, I feel like I've been decoding for longer than that. On the bright side, you've been getting a lot of exercise. <laughs> sure. 
Uh, you're right, it probably 62. Let's leave it at that. I didn't say 62. I said 58. He squints, looking at you for a second. Wait. This requires scientific measurements. Uh, bring it on. I'm not afraid of the truth, or I don't want to think about this anymore. Eh, bring it on. I'm not afraid of the truth. To the laboratorium. Oh, yeah? New thought? Date of birth generator? <laughs> face looks like it's 58, your body feels like it's 60, your mind feels like it's lived for a, one day or a hundred, both longer than they ought to be by the, the day in the century, but for how long then and has this thing attached to your sentience walked to the planet's crust? Time to start racking those brains of yours, Elder One. When and where were you born? Well, well something, to, something to research later, maybe. <clears throat> Anyway, um, yeah, what's our next, next objective? Oh, talk to Titus about the door, me door gunner mega mix. Okay, I, I guess we'll go do that. Uh, oh, there's that window again. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk. Anyway, nothing new there. Let's, uh, no, this window. I was trying to, mm, trying to click on the stairs, darn it. <laughs> All right, let's go talk to Titus again. Titus and crew. It's you again. What is it? <clears throat> uh, I want to talk about the hang again. So I talked to Classy about the about the tape. <clears throat> Tenses immediately. Chest tightens. Jaw sets. Ready for another blow. And nothing. She stands by what she said. Or I'll get back to you on that one. I mean, we're here to confront him about it, so yeah. And nothing. She stands by what she said. <clears throat> that fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. Yeah. Not really. <clears throat> Cool. It was just locker room talk. It's not evidence. Uh, it's dark stuff, but didn't prove anything and didn't change her mind. Uh, yeah, it was bad. Honestly, I expected it to have have more effect. Um, or she pretty much laughed it off, Titus. <laughs> mm. Lock locker room banter. <laughs> It's just, I'm just reminded of that whole uh, Trump recording thing. Anyway, um, dark stuff, but didn't prove anything, didn't change her mind. Um, I'm going to go with it didn't prove anything, it didn't change her mind. Dark. Dark is when you start a goddamn death rock band. He said he'd rape her. <laughs> he shakes his head in disbelief. What did she have to say then? Fine by her. This is what people are supposed to be like. Fucking whoop de doo. I mean, she seems like the kind of person who's like into really dark stuff. Quite frankly, <laughs> um, she did not say whoop de doo. Uh, it did not come as a surprise to her, and she definitely wasn't scared. Actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. Hmm. If anything, she seemed turned on by the whole door gunning thing. I mean, yeah. Uh, Tice, she said she would like to be a little door gunner herself if she could. Um, I mean, she kind of, yeah, did say that. She said she didn't have the like the the build and the social positioning for it, but. Uh, This, this sort of feels, I mean, on the one hand, um, these are expressing a lot of similar sentiment, but on the other hand, um, it, 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 um, it's like um, the, 
that for the, the comment that Dev made before about this is this is your Rorschach test. Uh, what do you see when you uh, look at this situation? <clears throat> I mean, I don't think we need to tell him this, that she wanted to go be a quote-unquote door gunner. Um, I, I mean, telling him that she was turned on by the whole door gunner thing uh, might piss him off, you know. Is, I mean, he indicated that he uh, that he did he did have uh, he did have sex with her. Um, wouldn't surprise me if if um, he um, you know there there were some jealousy issues involved in there uh, prompting the killing. But, you know, part part of what prompted the, the killing. <clears throat> I don't know. Like, I, I, like, I'm tempted to try to piss him off. Just as it, it's like, it, it's, it, the, the situation kind of generally comes across like uh, Liz is is just barely keeping these guys in check. Like, there have been a few times that um, <clears throat> he uh, he started to run his mouth, and and she said, you know, Titus, careful, you know, careful what you say, careful, you know, remember what we talked about, kind of thing. <laughs> um. And one time she did kind of give him a verbal beat down and she just uh, like called out his full name and uh, you know to, to remind him to uh, to stand down. So it's just, it's just um, sort of going along that basis, it, it could be uh, it could be good to try to, to like deliberately try to piss him off just to uh, you know get a reaction out of him, maybe, maybe get more information. <clears throat> Um. <clears throat> you made her nostalgic. If it not come to surprise you, she definitely wasn't scared. I mean, I like on 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 one hand, going with the, it doesn't come as a surprise to her. She wasn't scared. Uh, it seems like the more sensible option, but. Uh, maybe maybe I'll go a little risque and go with this. She seemed turned on by the whole door, door gunning thing. Yes, in fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. <laughs> the, the tenant looks at you, then him. Is this is this Kim just just doing a little um, little teamwork, playing along kind of thing? <clears throat> funny. No. Titus mumbles as though it's barely moving. <clears throat> All right. Oh, fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking. He slams his giant fist on the door frame. <clears throat> Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Your voice is a bit softer than earlier. Hmm. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawman? Titus rubs his chin with his palm as if trying to grind it smooth. I, I still feel like there there are some unanswered questions that we could have and should have asked. Like, um, like I would have liked to have asked Classy if if she like, you know, witnessed the killing or knew anything about it. You know, um, because that was never clear. Like, was was she? Uh oh. OPS disconnecting. Gosh darn it. Well, I guess we're waiting for this thing to uh, correct itself. Check, check. Is this thing on? Reconnection successful? Are we back online again? The recording is uninterrupted. Uh, the Twitch is all confused. Oh well. Um, anyway, yeah, what was I saying? 
Yeah, like I, I feel like there, there was room to get more information out of her. Like we've heard um, Hardy Boy's side of it, and there, there are inconsistencies in the story um, that that make me want to try to get more information. And uh, she seems like the most likely person to get more information from. Oh well, <sighs> there is still the the smoker from the balcony. We're, we're supposed to try to track down after nine o'clock here. It's, 515 um <clears throat> anyway uh what are the options here uh maybe she isn't who you thought she was maybe she's still in denial you know like a defense mechanism or be straight with me tight what really happened to wrap this up um let's go maybe she isn't who you thought she was nah i know her she's just a girl in over her head he looks upstairs distracted, okay. She's not some helpless girl, she handled the mercenary well enough. Uh, she's a hardcore party girl with a bigger death wish than mine. Uh, huh, I guess you do know her then. Um, <clears throat> let's go with her. She's, she's not some helpless girl, she handled the mercenary well enough. Handled him? She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yes, yes, we heard all about it, and the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's go with uh, Peace Chair with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you. We fucking hanged him. That's his giant face in his hand and hands and size. <clears throat> There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, Titus. The stakes are too high here. There will be blood on the streets. The tribunal, remember. I know you're tired. Why don't you just... He closes his notebook. <clears throat> you know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you. Them. And the whore upstairs. Hmm. Next time you see her, tell her. Fuck off! He throws his beer can down. <clears throat> oh, more tear for me. <laughs> this is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. Hmm. That lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Hmm. Yeah. There's a silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something, then thinks best not to. On the floor, beer drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. Hmm. What is this quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers union. 20 beers? <laughs> for seven people? Okay. <clears throat> that doesn't, that's not divisible by seven. <laughs> Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. <laughs> and then shuts from behind the counter. <clears throat> 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. <laughs> the window might have been closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they will be. <clears throat> Ooh. Rhetoric Godly 16 convinced Titus he is being manipulated. Plus, one, okay, so I get plus one because ever asked to cooperate, plus one because he's warned about the tribunal, plus one because he discussed the eighth hardy, and plus one because I confronted, uh, confronted about the drug trade. It only gives me a 28% chance. This is like, hmm. I guess this is, this is the next thing I have to try to find evidence to convince him about, and, uh, hmm. <clears throat> Presumably, I have to find more evidence to to raise this score here. I mean, I can try it. Twenty eight percent is kind of low. <clears throat> um, rhetoric. Which one's rhetoric? Practice the art of persuasion and Joy Rickerson's actual discourse. Right. Okay. <clears throat> 
Hmm. I mean, I have a skill point I can put into it if if I uh, if I want to. <clears throat> it's my uh, last one for the moment. As my next goal is convince the Hardy Boys to tell you the whole story. Hmm. Hardy and the boys know the whole story. It'll be difficult to get it out of him. Have you thoroughly inspected the body? Looked around for a witness? Got in front of the unit boss and the company rep? Really got into classy? Gosh darn it. Like, I do want to inspect the body more, but the game doesn't seem to give me that option. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's in the trunk of uh, Kim's car right now which is annoying. Like, can we just... I mean... If I'd known it was just going to be bundled into the car and then just sit there, then I would have I would have left it on the ground so that we can uh, like come back to it and inspect it again. Uh, I just got a... I just got a bad series of rolls. Like, I, I, like I tried to do thorough inspection of the body a few times and it just, I just got bad rolls every time. Um, but whatever. <clears throat> like, I, I have a strong suspicion there's there was something else in the body that we missed. Anyway. Shall we, shall we give this a roll? Uh, 28%? I, I, I guess that means, um... Is that, is that like 9 or higher, or something like that? Watch me roll a four. I've been rolling lots of fours. Let's give it a whirl. Clausia is playing them Eight. like a fiddle. Eight. Tell them how bad they got played, and they'll tell you the truth. There are many ways to go about it. All of them <laughs> really good. I rolled an eight. I do believe I needed a nine or higher for that one. Is it nine or ten? 28%? Uh, whatever. Um, okay, well... I was very close. Uh, you guys are always telling me they're good, and then they aren't. <laughs> yeah, this one is not in quotes. That means I'm talking to myself here, or, or talking to my psyche, or internally talking to my psyche. You guys are always telling me they're good, and then they aren't. Those are the other guys. My shit is solid gold. You can trust me. Can I? All those ideas looked really bad. Okay, but please, I can't afford to fail now. I've come too far. <laughs> I, I didn't even look at the dialogue options there. Um, oh, you don't like these arguments. Let's see you come up with your own then. Come on, everyone's waiting. Where <laughs> are they? Okay. Uh, okay, man, it's clear you're being played like a fiddle. Play an imaginary fiddle. I know what's going on here. I've been I've been wronged too. I got this effing dark shadow over my heart. Same thing happened to my friend Gout over there. A chick tried to make him part of her cock carousel. Excuse me? What? Uh, I'm going to tell you a little story about Kim here. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and Top Gamers here. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? <clears throat> uh, we... Uh, What's happening? We we just talked to uh, Classia about the um, uh, the tape. <clears throat> uh, she basically um, indicated that, like, yeah, the colonel is a pretty rough guy, but I'm pretty rough myself, kind of thing. Uh, she stuck to her st the story that she was not sexually assaulted by him. Um, and uh, we confronted, uh, we're confronting Titus about that. And trying to get, convince him to tell the full story of what actually happened. <clears throat> and I failed the role, so it's giving me a pile of bad options to say. <laughs> That's what's happening here. <clears throat> so basically, uh, none of these are going to be fruitful. <clears throat> oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> nice to get a, a whole screen full of bad options. <laughs> um you're being played like a fiddle. I know what's going on here. I've been effing wrong. Sorry, I've been wrong too. I got this effing dark shadow in my heart. This thing. Like, I friend guard. Look at this. She tried to make a part of her cock here. And we can ro try to rope Kim into it. <laughs> um, let's go with the, the dark shadow over my heart thing. It's just. Whatever. What the hell are you talking about? Hmm. 
As I wake into this world, something came with me, an ancient sadness. That's weird. I got effed by some chick, effed real bad. <clears throat> Look around, cop. These men are dock workers. They don't want to hear about your psycho circus. Yeah. I don't know, boss. <laughs> I'm always up for another suicide attempt. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, me too. I'm always up to see a cop cry. Great. You won't hear it. That's enough for the circus now, officer. Let's do procedural questions, or even, why not take a little breather? <laughs> he nods toward the exit. Yeah, fair enough. These working class folks mm. don't know how to talk about feelings. You shouldn't have opened up to them, or anyone. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, I'm gonna go take off now. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I took a morale hit. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll leave the morale hit there. I, I've got the, I've got the uh, uh, meds for healing the morale, but uh, it's um, content to leave that for the time being. Okay, <clears throat> so what other options have we got here? Track down your badge. Um, put the clothes in the trash. Who else has unauthorized access to the whirling trash? Find this person you'll know who tampered with the scene. Eh. <clears throat> whirling secret passages. Yeah, we never f found a way into that locked door. <clears throat> I mean, I guess we just have to keep an eye out for a key or something. Smoker in the balcony, we have to come back to him after 9 o'clock, and it's only 5.24 here. Um, hell. Um, so, uh, we just kind of... It's just, we just kind of have to faff about for a bit, I guess. I mean, I'm just looking at the, looking through this guy. Have you thoroughly inspected the body? We, can, we can't inspect the body anymore. Looked around for a witness. Like we've talked to everyone aside from the the, the, the smoker in the balcony that we can't talk to until later. Um, gone friendly with the union boss and the company rep. I mean, we've talked to both of them. Really gotten to Classia. Uh, gotten to her. I um, I don't. Hmm. I mean, we've we've gone through all the uh, all the options. I, I don't. She doesn't seem like she's someone who's easy to get to, so to speak. <clears throat> so, okay, close the lockbox. We can't do that until the next day. Primarily could dissolve, just we can't do that until the next day. Get to signatures for effort, we can't do that until the next day. Find the armor gloves, can't do that to the next day. Find smokes and smoke them. I don't think this is an urgent... Um... <laughs> Uh, any kind of uh, uh, urgent task here. Um, check in your badge. We don't have a lead for that. We're just gonna have. This is just this is a. Maybe you'll just stumble across it down the line. I guess. Okay. Who put the clothes in the trash? Again, this is another one that says it might take a while. We don't have a lead to, to follow for that. Explore the wearing secret patches again. That that's just. Um, I mean, unless we find a key, I, I don't know what we're supposed to do to that. Sing karaoke. Um, get hold of a sad song on tape. I, um, so we're going back. Maybe you have to wait until 9 o'clock for that. <sighs> I don't suppose Kim has anything else to say, does he? Yes. Why did the 41st send me? Uh, Sylvie suicide jokes and Roy mentioned suicide. Um, hmm. Was this here before? This is a white check. Let's, let's give it a try. You pick over what's left of your frontal cortex, mm. but no compelling explanations emerge. Well. Okay, nothing. <clears throat> I 
Oh, look at the body again. Okay. Um, well, we can look at the map, I guess. Um, Kim gets strategy logic formula. So this is, this is the white checker we just did, I believe. And it's, it's showing lit up. Okay, this is lit up because I click on it, I guess. Cafeteria window. Oh yeah, that, that one's showing in white. Can I can I look at that again? The last time I I did I, I got a severe penalty because it said not time yet. Is it time? I wonder. Just wanted to take a peek at this. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. <clears throat> the hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Mysterious door scene. You've been here for a long time. Yeah, because this one previously had like, it was like minus 12 or something because it said not time yet. I'm going to give it a whirl. There's a yellow oh. ring tied to one of the branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny speck of color in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it. A bronze key. A bronze key, you say? Well, well, well. It just so happens uh, we might be interested in finding a key. What time you got some good luck on a roll? Yeah, no kidding. Got, rolled a nine on a roll where we needed at least nine. That's a heck of a thing. <clears throat> huh. Hawthorne oh, branch escaped the glass like bony fingers. Uh, is a a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches, light yellow, faded with time, a tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it a bronze key. Um, so this is outside the window, presumably. Someone hid the key in the bush and attached the yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. Huh. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Close enough to the line. But it's like behind the dock workers. Are we... Mm -hmm. Okay, well this is my only option is to say someone's had a key in the bush pointed at the window. Are, are we talking to Kim here, or...? Huh? The guy looks behind him. Uh, I need you guys to hand the key to me. Can you slide... Can you let me slide by so I can grab the thing? Uh, Tyus, can you hand the key to me? Um... I don't think they're in a state of mind they're going to want to do me any favors. <laughs> can I can I not, like, grab it from outside? I mean, it's, it's it's on the other side of the window, right? Yeah, because it's talking about opening the window to grab the key. Can, can, we, can we not grab it from outside, maybe? I don't know. Need your guys to hand the key to me. Can you let me slide by so I can grab the thing? Let's go with can you let me slide by so I can grab the thing. I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. Don't think any sliding would really help right now. <laughs> Tattoo man yawns and settles more comfortably on the bench. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. Great. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, <laughs> pushes the window open, grabs the key from the hawthorn branch, and slides it across the table to you. <laughs> Good old Theo. He just, he just says, uh, just hand him the key. <laughs> Take the key. The key is brass. Workshop spare is etched into it's bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. <laughs> He's a, a Theo is apparently not as amused uh, by the other guy's antics as, as, as they are. Yeah. Anyway. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. <laughs> uh, thank you, nod to the old man, or... Does anyone know why this key was hanging right outside the union box window or <clears throat> the key in your hand? I wonder what door 
What doors does it open? <clears throat> There's leave. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say thank you. That seems polite. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. <laughs> Little man takes out his pack of chewing tobacco. <clears throat> I mean, the way they react is suggest they don't know what the key is for. Um. <clears throat> I mean, it's a logical question to ask. Do anyone know why the key is hanging, uh, hanging out there? But I, I, like, I, sus I suspect one, they don't know, and two, even if they did know, they wouldn't tell me. <laughs> uh, they're kind of hostile to me right now. Um, Maybe I'll ask him anyway. Didn't even know it was there. Boys. Man looks at the key in your hand and around the room. No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. <laughs> Just because it's an option, I'm going to say, look at the key in your hand. I wonder what doors this does this open. Does it could it... open the door in the kitchen. The blue door. I mean, yeah. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there. It's worth a try. That, that's what I assume it's for. I mean, it's... it's. Uh... <clears throat> you see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. Try the workshop spare key in the door. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then the lock clicks. Well, well, well. I wonder what we're going to find in here. Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb haunted by regal spirits from distant ages. No. <laughs> Smells like engine grease and cut wood. A workshop. <clears throat> the... Inland Empire guts a uh, gut uh gut sense and hunches tells me is it a tomb I think, like perception smells like no. <laughs> All right, what do we got? This pinball says Franklin Nigerian. The t theme is horses and swords. Okay, so it's pinball machines. Okay. This pinball is white Diara. The black last was a female figure in mourning. A note, uh, note bene, the spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. Okay, so it's, um, the note saying where the key is, is inside the room. Okay, never mind. And what have we here? Money! <laughs> the money's is mine's. And another pinball machine, presumably? Over there, in the corner. The pinball machine? Question mark. Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. <clears throat> okay, why are you seeing what I'm seeing? Point to the machine, or let's take a closer look. Pull up the machine. Uh, no, I'm out. Leave. Um, Kim is gonna. Be, I, I can already predict Kim is gonna be like, "Why are you wasting your time with this?" Like. We're investigating a murder, and you're playing games. <laughs> the pinball machine. Gold is gold. A classic. Oh, neat. <laughs> Maybe he approves then. <laughs> Lieutenant glances at the machine. <clears throat> uh, wait, you played it? A little. <laughs> Let's take a closer look. Why not? <clears throat> wait, oh, really? Great. Hmm? Did that... Past time there, or oh, okay, we just <laughs> oh, great that it's size. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get the game on, Finger Boy. Those flippers are ready. Yeah, it says interfacing. I should. I feel like I should have the interfacing gloves on. <clears throat> <clears throat> Do I want to toss a, a real in on, on this? I, I, I just got myself over the, the 20 real mark that I'm going to need for the, 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 the next day. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so this, this, uh, if I spend a royale here, then I'm gonna have to hope that I can find more money later. But um, I'm sure there'll be more money to find. It's not a big deal. I, I, I'll, I'll try at least one round. But since it's, again, it says interfacing skill, I'm gonna put the the other gloves back on since they boost my interfacing uh, stat. But first, I'm gonna read this. Uh, lean close to read the text. Above the painting of a mustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The mesk legend holds that when the nation is in danger, <laughs> heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. Inspect the playing field. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. Okay. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. <laughs> the, the, the balls in the pinball machine have goats on them? That's, that's cute. <clears throat> Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with all the goats? Indeed. Think of them as balls. Okay, I'm gonna click pinball isn't for me. And... <clears throat> uh, close. Yeah, because these ones get boost my interfacing skill. I don't think I have anything else that affects interfacing. These gloves improve my pinball ability. Apparently. Just 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 one round. Just Over one there, in the corner. Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Just just one round, Kim. One, just one oh, round. Great. <laughs> Cornelius Wood, get the game on, finger boy. Those flippers are ready. All right, insert one real. Go. It takes a while to get into a rhythm, but pretty soon you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. I just got to achieve it so Gertie Ball is lit. <laughs> get your pinball on. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Go, go, finger boy. I feel sorry for the gods. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Hmm. Uh, wait, what kind of guy was, was he then? The kind of a guy who uses the word savages hmm. not when recounting his travels. A masked nationalist. A racist mountaineer. <laughs> An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining hall. Surrounded by wall-mounted hunting trophies from every continent. <clears throat> uh, it's not cool. Or technically, the human beings are at the top of the food chain. So dot dot dot. Um, let's go with that. It's not cool. Um, just... He also hit his wife, Oof. His kids, other people's kids too. Sometimes pets. Hateful little rat. Got some anger issues. Sounds like. Just a, just a violent guy. <clears throat> um, yeah, you know, cruelty to animals is also, uh, it's one of those those um, uh, markers that indicate someone is going to turn out to be a, a, a serial killer. Uh, have you paid for tonight yet? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah, tonight is paid for. It's the, the next 20 real would be for the, the night after that. Um, uh, yeah, the, um, uh, yeah, the three signs of, that someone might turn into, uh, turn out to be a serial killer, like, it, it is, if, if they're, when, when they're young, they, uh, they the first is, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, cruelty to animals is the first one, followed by, uh, fire starting, and, funnily enough, bedwetting, um, 
this is one of those one of those is this correlation or causation moments you know uh but apparently there, there's a, a a high rate of bedwitting amongst uh serial killers um they played into that in the movie um uh, was it red dragon i think it was it's the uh the the signs of the lambs prequel <clears throat> um which uh which um kind of uh, uh, sort of dri drives the point home that, that for him the whole bedwetting thing was, was about like a loss of control. Not that I'm saying that again, uh, again, again. Correlation, causation, yada yada. It's, 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 I'm not, it's not to say that the, 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 like the bedwetting caused him to become a serial killer so much, but it's more like it's, it's one of those symptoms of uh, his uh, 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 his psyche, that 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 feeling of, of loss of control and wanting to control his environment. <clears throat> um, oh yeah, then you can probably find the at least forty cents for exactly. Uh, yeah, this instance of someone who was probably an asshole being normalized through characterization is in no way indicative of real world examples. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get it. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. <clears throat> but you seem to be having fun. Uh, pretty good at this. Continue playing. <laughs> Your game is definitely improving. The jolly ghosts <laughs> are flying all over the board, and although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. We just we just killed half an hour here, by the way, <laughs> which is just as well because we need to pass time to nine o'clock, <laughs> so we can talk to the uh, to the other guy. <laughs> it's just like, all right, time well spent. Um, concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths, but finally. The opportunity presents itself. One of them gets through. Another 15 minutes elapsed. <laughs> the words pale rupture light up on the speaker panel, and the machine starts filling with a thick, milky fog. Something's happening. Um, now, this thick, milky fog, is, is this an intentional visual effect that the game is supposed to produce, or is the game, like, malfunctioning and it's on fire? <laughs> Congratulations. This is where the game ends. It's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. Hmm. There's so much fog, you can barely see anything. Some is actually leaking out of the machine, and one by one, your guns hmm. start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. Aww. This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. <clears throat> Use them to calculate where they hit next. <clears throat> oh man, I should have I should have worn the visual calculus glasses. <laughs> <clears throat> You're down to your last goat, going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point, but that goat is something special. Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. Just... Kim, it can be done. Just watch. Uh, reaction speed legendary 14 stay on the ball. 17% chance. I got a plus one for understand ball games. Interesting. Or why do they even make these if it's impossible to win? Give up. Winning is too stressful. Um, I mean, so far I've, I've done all this on one real. So as long as it's not costing me more, uh, I'll keep at it. I'm going to go with Kim. Can be done. Just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. You will eventually make a mistake, and then it's all over. Uh, this Why do they even make these if it's impossible to win? Give up winning is too special. Why do they even make these if it's impossible to win? Give up winning is too special. Why, why does this option appear twice? Weird. Um, <clears throat> well, shoot. Okay, 17% chance of success. Can I do this? Probably not. I, uh, see if I can get an 11 or 12. With automation or ten, I guess. You keep the final goat ball in play. 
reacted to the tiniest stimuli, floating in the flow state. The fog is clearing, and suddenly the old speaker crackles. Wow, okay. I actually got a good roll. How about that? <clears throat> <laughs> Two in a row, yeah, no kidding. Gorgy ball is lit. Penis Gertie and the Mountain Goats. That was a red check too, so I would not have been able to re-roll it. It was, I, I got lucked out on a seventeen percent chance thing. That's that's kind of neat. Huh? <laughs> a panel opens up at the top of the playfield, and a new ball charges downhill. It's larger than the goats and the matte black. Cornelius spell the white letters running across the equator. So violent is its descent. It immediately knocks the last goat into the abyss, then proceeds to bounce all across the board as if carried by some demonic otherworldly inertia. Hmm. High score announced the speakers, and the whole machine lights up. Then the flippers retract, leaving a perfect opening for the gaudy ball to join the goats backstage. Cornelius vanishes, and the machine powers off. Oh. Actually, won the game. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> this head mumbles. He sounds a little out of breath. Uh, I think I won, Kim. <laughs> you didn't just win. No one I know has ever beaten Gordy's goats. That is a monumental achievement, Detective. <laughs> hey, we impressed Kim. <laughs> That's our primary goal. <laughs> uh. 5 XP and, and more importantly, impress Kim, exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's, just a, okay, it's just a silly game. No, don't downplay your achievement. Come on. <laughs> Who's the king of pinball? Kim, hold out your fist. Congratulations, your highness. That was really impressive. <laughs> Heal morale. <laughs> Hooray. I was, I was hoping I would get a morale boost out of that game. See, I, it, it paid to hold off on using the, the morale healing uh, meds there. <clears throat> yeah, got the morale back. Uh, we killed an entire hour doing that. <laughs> yeah, just your highness of the tenant flies. His knuckles touch yours and he smiles. That was really impressive. The machine needs a good service before anyone else can even attempt it again. Yeah. It's time to move on. <laughs> yes. Good times. <laughs> Ten gives Kitty his Kitty in the mountain goes one last look. Once again, the machine becomes one with the dust and the darkness. Life has left it, unlikely <clears throat> to ever return. Yeah. I'm, I'm half tempted to say, oh, that seems like a good time to end the stream, but no, I, I'm going to carry on. I uh, still want to check out what's behind through this door over here. Oh, I have a thought. All these mesmerizing machines. Just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Mm. Uh, run your finger across the dust of the white Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white robed woman. <clears throat> Sweet Diora, how about we fire one of these bad boys up and play some fun? I, I think we should quit while we're ahead. We already we already won, won the the goat game. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that already suggests. Um, suggests the, 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 the title of the VOD when I put it up. <laughs> There's something like, you know, greatest goat of all time. I don't know. Uh, what's White Diora? Some kind of inane pinball theme, probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. There was a time when I thought that one day, if I ever had a place of my own, I'd set up a, a row of pinball machines in the basement or something and keep them maintained for fun. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I know a guy who has uh, a, a pinball machine in his, in his basement. It's, uh, it's fun stuff. Good times. I, I can't claim to be the best at it or anything, but it's, it's just, I don't know. It, it's it's a it's a neat little um, conversation piece at least. <clears throat> uh, anyway, <clears throat> the lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. Hmm. Uh, sounds like you don't enjoy pinball camp. Well, he said the history theme. I mean, 
I, I, probably it's more related to what what, uh, what you were saying there, Diablo Graves, uh, of um, uh, 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 trying to take historical themes and make them, you know, more fun. <laughs> Uh, what they what they dealt with really dark stuff, <laughs> trying to uh, gloss over atrocities or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Kim. <clears throat> no, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. <laughs> okay. He doesn't. <laughs> <clears throat> um. What about that other one, the Franco-Nigerian ball? Want to play that? Let's just let's just move on. <laughs> um, should I close the door behind me? I don't know. I don't. I get the feeling the game doesn't care, but I'm gonna close it anyway. Ooh, I have another thought. Master investigator, <coughs> you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? Or it's my duty as a cop to investigate every square inch of the world. Hey, I'm not some sort of a peeper. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna go with, what do you mean? Nothing, nothing. You're right. Get in there. Deep. Invade every personal space. Break every lock. <clears throat> I mean... <clears throat> I can think of it. <clears throat> excuse me. I can think of a couple of other... Uh, or a few other doors we haven't been through. Um, I mean, <clears throat> the bookstore had a curtain leading, leading into the back room. <clears throat> I had the option of, of, of looking back there, and I, I opted not to. But not the least because the uh, the owner told us not to go back there. <clears throat> there is also uh, a locked door in the apartment building, which um, Kim indicated we could probably open using the bolt cutters if, if, we, uh, <clears throat> if we ever had any reason to go in there. Um... And we don't really have any reason for going in there, but <laughs> if I if I actually truly run out of things to do, uh, it could be an option. And the third uh, door would be the one on Classia's roof. It looked rather odd. She said she didn't know where it leads. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Uh, let's go with It's my duty as a cop to investigate every square inch of this world, I guess. Atta boy, the world seekers were made for you. They wait patiently for you to uncover them. <laughs> hey, we got a, a, a thought about the jam rock shuffle. <laughs> That's uh, the thing that Kim identified. <clears throat> Gives us minus one teamwork, or a split to color when we're uh, researching it, but by now it's clear you like to look inside containers. You like to open doors and see what's behind them. Maybe secrets? Maybe more juicy containers? Let's be honest, you like all containers. Trash cans, utensil trays, manholes, coat pockets. Secret containers left behind by the Philippine kings that hold forbidden relics. Okay, you haven't come across one of those yet, but one day. Wait, is that why you're so hell-bent on opening containers? Do you think you'll find the Holy Scepter and the Orb de Montagne? Hmm. Hmm. And this, I mean, Jamrock Shuffle. This, this sounds like something that uh, <clears throat> um, I don't know might might give me access to um, to being able to open or or look in more things. Maybe it <clears throat> could be a good thought to have. <laughs> Why did I waste waste the the slot on the fifteenth Indo Tribe thing? Oh well. Um. At least the Indo Tribe one doesn't give me a penalty. Yeah. Like the physical instrument one it gives me a penalty to my encyclopedia, and some kind of superstar one gives me a penalty to my logic. Like, and these. Like, these, these don't even seem like they're that useful to me. I mean, like, they. they um, they boost the learning caps for these things, okay, but since I'm not at the learning caps for those, it, it just it just seems like a waste. Like I'm taking a penalty for nothing and getting no bonus from it. And the physical instrument one, I only get plus two if the shirt slot is empty, which it effectively um, uh, 
I mean, you can stop thinking about the Ender Tribe one. Oh, wait, really? You don't think they're locked in until you finish them? Oh, is that, is that so? Can I, can I just, if I hit stop on this... Okay, so it holds it at 30% and I can come back to it another time, perhaps? Shall we do the Jamrock Shuffle? I'm going to try out the Jamrock Shuffle. Anyway, boy, the world's secrets are made for you. They wait patiently for you to uncover them. Cool. Okay, so curious to know what's through this door. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, well, yeah, and the the, yeah, the, coach, the physical, physical instrument one, like like I already have a shirt which boosts a physical instrument with plus one, so really, this effectively only gives me plus one on top of that. Um, so it, it's it's like, uh, it, it's uh, like it 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 could have been it, it could have been good. Uh, when I was trying to deal with the, um, uh, um, you know, Mr. Measurehead, but uh, I'm like past that point, so it's like it feels like it feels like a waste. Um, yeah, this is why I said you should only pick them if you think they're applicable to the character you want to be. They're not really for maxing your stats. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, oh well. Um, you know, live and learn. I mean, this is the kind of game which feels like it's 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 designed for replay value. So, like, anyway, let's move on. Like, you you can. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. Hmm, an elevator. Does this go behind the door on uh, on Cassia's uh, balcony, perhaps? Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right, <clears throat> and just enough room for two people to fit in. How convenient. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. Last ma so mass maintenance was so like 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 sixty sixty three years ago because <clears throat> we're in fifty one right <laughs> so really nobody's been here a long time <clears throat> is it safe to go up if it, when it hasn't been touched in sixty years hmm. Uh, let's look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons. Monter, the sound, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. <laughs> this looks. This is looking more and more unsafe. We're, we're totally going in there. Uh, that says the last maintenance was in '88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. Wait, really? <laughs> How uncharacteristically. Um, Brash for Kim. This last this elevator is maintained in the future. <laughs> or eighty-eight. This elevator is maintained a long time ago. <laughs> it's, it's funny. At the end of the last century, look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four months in the hospital, <laughs> maximum five. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. Uh, I wonder what this elevator is used for. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. He taps on the guttering light bulb. It's golden in the dark. <clears throat> All right, close the doors and go up. <laughs> huh. OK, so I guess this isn't behind Katya's room, then. Where the heck are we? I'm just trying to visualize the geography of the hostel as we know it. I mean, like they got the, that staircase going up there, and this the positioning of it. Like it, it, it does seem like it would line up with that. But mm, okay, let's take a look at stuff. 
Small windows taped shut with black plastic. You can't see outside. Um, okay, you know what? Before I look around, um, I am going to go use the washroom. I will be right back. So I'll leave you in suspense about what's actually in here. And I'm back again. <sighs> so yeah, some of these um, uh, 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 hmm, it, like these this, these traits and stuff, they, they feel like they're uh, like you're meant to play around with them in, in uh, di di like differently in future playthroughs or something. <clears throat> anyway, okay, let's let's check this stuff out. <clears throat> Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. And what's on the desk here? Is a note? Schematics for a pinball machine. Futurism themed. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> and what have we here? Take all. Pinball maker's coat? Uh, Kim, what, what are you up to there? <laughs> You're having some issues with your pathfinding? Uh, plus one empathy and plus one hand-eye coordination. 
my, my current uh, coat boosts uh, Esprit de corps and Shivers, so teamwork and ability to tune into the city. Like, the, the ability, okay, Shivers, ability to tune into the city, that, that hasn't really benefited me. Like, it periodically gets some weird atmospheric messages. Um, the teamwork one helps me, uh, helps me, um, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, it helps me work with Kim and maybe helps me impress him more, which is obviously the primary goal of the game. Uh, that said, um, having a boost to empathy and hand-eye coordination, hmm. This dusty old coat used to belong to someone called M. Nyflox. The name is stitched into the silk lining. It smells of moths and ancient engine grease, but fits you perfectly. A strange, lonely emotion fills you when you tighten the belt around your waist. I'm gonna try it on. There you go. Ooh, hey, classy. Do 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 do. <coughs> Sorry, for some reason, Inspector Gadget came immediately to mind. <laughs> Getting a real noir looking. Yeah. <coughs> Um, yeah, let's try it out for a, for a bit. <laughs> just break into this place and put on someone else's coat. <laughs> Kim's just standing there watching, watching me do this. Okay, what's another pinball machine here? <clears throat> pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. Aw, and I have a thought. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up. A long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. Hmm. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. <clears throat> uh, looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball machines at some point, or this used to be a pinball workshop, or not interested in this kind of thought. Um, I mean, yeah, this used to be a pinball workshop. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. Mm. There are machines left over. He taps his foot. <coughs> a creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've mm. seen one of the Hardys bang away at it. Yeah. You seen one of the Hardys bang away? When did you get to see what the Hardys bang away at it? You've been by my side the entire time. <coughs> Anyway, looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball machines at some point. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. <laughs> pinball never goes out of vogue. <laughs> anyway, finish thought. What's this? Footprints? You clearly see footprints <clears throat> in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Aha! So someone has been b back here recently. <clears throat> uh, someone's been here within the last week or two. Let's have a closer look at them. Crouch study footprints. Well, shoot, I should have I should have put on the visual calculus glasses. Hold on. Let's move on. But I'm gonna just so I can put on the uh, so I can see them better. I guess. I don't know if there's going to be a visual calculus roll. It just seems like a thing to do. Footprints. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Okay, someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum, mm. from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week, too. You know, officer. He looks to you. This is good. He likes it. That's a little smile there, in the dark of the workshop. <laughs> Aha, my, my empathy code is working. <laughs> this isn't bad at all. It was a good idea to see where that door leads. Commendable work, bringing us to this place. That's the Jamrock Shuffle, baby. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and I just gained uh, enough experience to level up again, if I want. So that's cool. <clears throat> okay, uh, what does this mean? Okay, what, what does this mean? I mean, we want to find out more about where this leads, of course. Um, 
what it, what it means kind of depends more. It kind of depends a lot on what we find, really. <clears throat> it means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route behind Classius' room mm. in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. <clears throat> okay, so is that Classius' room? Okay, so <laughs> could Classius be in there, like hearing everything we're saying here? <clears throat> may prove to be significant. Yeah, particularly if this is how they got the jump on uh, on the colonel. Like, if they, they snuck up on him this way. <clears throat> okay, let's have a closer look then. They crouch and study the footprints. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Sole could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left the pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. Hmm. This print doesn't look like the odd sole print we found at the hanging. Uh, this doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hang, does it? Or... Hmm. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like odd sole, so there's that. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. Possible, yeah. This doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hang, does it? Does it? I mean, I'm going to say it because it's an option to say. No, these little horizontal lines are different. Mm. They look custom made to me, or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot, no? Yeah, okay. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. Okay, well, let's move on. They zoom out. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so there's the door. What have we here? There's a tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. Yeah. I had a feeling somebody was spying on them. I mean, I, I thought, like, from what they were talking about, tapping uh, uh, recordings or whatever, I thought they, they were, like, they would bugged the room. They were listening in. Looks like they were watching them, too. <clears throat> Somebody was getting a show uh, anytime Classy had someone over. She did indicate that she had multiple people in there. I mean, maybe not at the same time, but you know. Never know what you might find when you go exploring. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> anyway, what's this thought here? You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around. Uh, I think I can see into Classia's bedroom from here. Or, or what were those people doing in there? Um, yeah, I think I can see into Classia's bedroom from here. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. Uh, he leans closer to inspect the people. I mean, If you say so. Um, the footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. Points to the marks nearby on the floor. Hmm. Boring footprints. I want to jump to sensationalist conclusions. I want to jump to sensationalist conclusions. Exactly. Anyway, what were those people doing in there? Doing uh, dash dash in there. You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural. Sensationally unnatural. Uh, sensationally unnatural. Uh huh. Thanks, electrochemistry. <clears throat> uh, finish thought. Hey, uh, can I open this door now? This is the <clears throat> inside of the barred door you've seen before. Uh, quote. So, what's on the other side? So, that's saying it out loud. I mean, it's. I mean, it's pretty obvious from this stamp. I'll say it anyway. Unless we veered off into a forbidden dimension, I'm expecting to step out on the roof. We could ask Class about this route. See how she reacts. Yeah, let's let's just come out of the door while she's still standing on the balcony. <clears throat> Un okay, unbar the door.
Hey, Classy. <laughs> Before I talk to you, take off the visual calculus glasses. They, they, they hurt the drama. <clears throat> I was just thinking, what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. <laughs> she looks around. <clears throat> um, okay, I need to talk to you about your room again. Yeah. That door there, point to it. Did you know it leads to a downstairs elevator? I did not. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. She takes a drag of her cigarette and smiles. <clears throat> hmm. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a people on the other side looking into your bedroom. There were tracks on the floor, they're recent. It's an old pinball workshop room back there. This place this place used to be a pinball arcade. <clears throat> uh, let's start with there were tracks on the floor, they're recent. Huh. This isn't good. Hmm. There's a there was a different tone in her, her voice there. Hmm. She's straight as a stick, suddenly. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, one of my goals did say to get to her, so... She feels like quarry, encircled. Her eyes dart to the door. There's a peephole on the other side looking into your bedroom. A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yeah. Yes, looking into your bedroom, miss. Lieutenant points to her window. The unmade bed is visible through the glass. <laughs> okay. There's a pause as she processes this information. It jitter her fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Hmm. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? It could just be a coincidence. Uh, or it could be connected. Uh, we don't know at this point. Um... I mean, I, I'm leaning towards saying it could be connected. I mean, we can just leave it up in the air and go, ah, we don't know. But uh, let's, let's say it could be connected. Okay. Do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Like how long the people has been there? Um, who knows? Unfortunately, no. But if I were to guess, long <clears throat> enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. Hmm. <clears throat> if it is recent, who do you think made it? There you go. Shit. I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like adult footprints. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? It's an old pinball workshop, the room back there, this place used to be a pinball arcade. Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. Huh. Uh, that's all for now. Mm-hmm. She flicks the ash from her cigarette absentmindedly. She's lost in thought. Eyes narrowed. Forehead furrowed. Hmm. Had a few more comments about what's behind the door. That window is new. Other questions for you. Um, okay, so these are these appear to be all the same all same right. things before. <laughs> Look at the, that that one. All right, is is much louder than the others just because you know she's deliberately the voice actress is leading into the mic to to uh, make sure the, the the sound of the drag can be heard. <laughs> anyway. Um, Like, do you want? Do you want to go through the other things? I mean, I I left off the uh, um like like the ask about you for the record. I I didn't um I, I there was the option to ask her for a passport. I didn't do that one. Uh, I wonder if I should. But um. 
maybe this is a good note to to end on uh, and like end the stream for today. Um, it's, uh, it's been it's been a good couple of hours. I, I um, yeah, I need to figure out where I'm going to go next. Well, let's just take a peek. See what. Sure. What is Oranya? Um, you know what the hell? Let's let's ask her about the passport. I'm afraid you can't, officer. Hmm. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline ticket. <laughs> Interesting. So. Is, is, is she, is she has some kind of getaway plan, like just in case. <laughs> Thank you for your candor. Why? I say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. Yeah, fair enough. Cash and airline tickets. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's for security reasons, she's afraid of being uh, robbed, I guess, or mugged. Uh, basically, if the worst happens, she can still uh, get the heck out. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have the legal right to demand your password, miss, or how do I know you've told us your real name? Or okay, then conclude. Um, how do I know you've told us your real name? If I were to lie to you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than Clausia Mondu. It's a weird name. Okay then. Um, I'm just gonna go with okay then. Conclude. Okie dokie. Let's pour yourself some co more coffee. If any of this made her nervous, it certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. Yeah, I mean, I can't can't force her passport from her, so it doesn't. If if she if it's true that she hid it, buried it somewhere. Um, I don't know. Uh, thank you. That's it for the record. The record, so official. Um. I'm just gonna check. To see Not my favorite topic, but okay. Yeah, I'm still not asking that one. How about we, you know, change the subject to something more? Okay. Anyway. Um. All right. Cool. So hey, we we got an objective done in terms. Of, we we uh, we got into that secret room, and we won pinball, uh, and we and uh, succeeded in our primary objective to uh, impress Kim. So uh, that seems like a good note to end on for today. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I have to, you know. Funnily enough, you know, when when I export these two vods for YouTube. What, it's like it's like this most stressful part of this, like trying to come up with what's a good thumbnail, what's a good uh, 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 video title. I, I, like like I'm thinking of like like oh, uh, I could have uh, like uh, he's a pinball wizard, you know, like the, 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 the who's Tommy reference, or um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I guess something more along the, the lines of acknowledging the goats would probably be more topical just because of the. You know, GOAT is a more recognizable modern acronym and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll come up with something. Um, but uh, yeah, moved the plot along a little bit. Uh, found some neat stuff. Um, just taking a peek at who's streaming. Lots of people are streaming. Um, probably not going to rate. I just want to take a peek anyway. Dance of Auto streaming. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, um, should probably put more thought into the thumbnails and titles of my boss. Yeah. I, like I said, it's stressful. Uh, I mean, if if you don't put more thought into them, maybe it's less stress for you. So maybe maybe it's maybe it works out better. <laughs> um, <clears throat> 
I don't know. I, I like to try to come up with something witty, but sometimes I'll, I'll just, I, I just sit there staring at it for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, I can't come up with anything. I just so, so, so throw some random garbage on there, whatever, who cares? Uh, uh, but um, it's, it's, just, it's just classic Torbu's overthinking things. Oh, well. Anyway, um, but uh, that's all for today. Uh, until next time. <laughs>